In this video, guys, we'll answer the question, should you specialize in obscure markets for more opportunity? Stay tuned. Hey guys, ladies and gents, a warm welcome to you. Thanks for tuning in. Right, okay, so should you specialize in obscure markets for more opportunities? So the question is really this. Okay, you've got on one side things like S&P 500, crude oil, DAX, Apple, all these big stocks that people are trading, big futures contracts, big markets, gold, etc. On the other side, all currencies like uh, Euro, US dollar, GBP, USD, uh, USD yen, on the other side, you've got obscure markets, like smaller stocks. You've got some of the exotic currency pairs. You've got perhaps more unusual futures contracts like cotton or coffee or whatever. I mean, coffee, maybe not so much, but you get the point. You've got these two things where stuff that a lot of people trade and talk about and things that not many people trade and not many people talk about. So the question is this, should you be trading these obscure ones to make more for more opportunity? Okay, so let's look at both sides of the coin. There, if we look on the yes side of it. Now, before I do this, I'm gonna to talk to you about my trading. Without a doubt, the majority of my profits over all of my time period of trading have come from one or two markets, and that's crude oil and DAX. Those have been my most profitable markets by far. However, there are spells where I've had time of multiple months and multiple years where I focused on obscure markets and they've been very good to me as well. However, the longevity of those has often been not so, not so long, well, it definitely hasn't been long. It's kind of run out, it's run its course and it's moved on to the next thing. So that brings me to this question, should you trade those? So the answer, by, by trade, if we look at the kind of yes argument, the yes argument is this, is that very often you'll spot an opportunity in those that other people are missing because they're not looking. They're looking at the big markets, they're looking at that, they're trying to trade those based on you know, what they feel is gonna happen with, with, with crude oil, what they think the global uh, economy is gonna do to Euro, etc. And that's fine because there's opportunity there, but very often these smaller markets, like second, third tier shares, they're sitting there, they're still reasonably liquid, we'll take a look about that in a second, but they've got all the attributes, but they're moving based a little, a little bit more easier to predict. So you might find that they're moving a little bit late to news that's, that's out there that normally would have been completely priced in already on some of the bigger stuff. They're kind of moving late to res in response to some of the bigger um, uh, companies in their sector. The currencies are not quite pricing in some of the things that you know about. So you, sometimes you can get an extra additional edge by trading these more exotic, more obscure instruments because you are kind of one of few who's actually doing the due diligence on it. I talked before about the mining companies, which was a kind of multi-month period, if not even more than that, multi-year period, where these second and third tier miners were you know, moving quite late to news where the bigger mining companies were uh, moving quite quickly. So there was a little, little bit of an edge there. And yes, the liquidity was less, but it's more than adequate for people like you and I to trade and to make some money from. So on the yes side of the coin is, well, actually you sometimes get a better edge. You sometimes, you know, there's a more distinct edge, i.e. they're late to move, like they're literally just being delayed in moving, in which case you, you know, you've kind of got a significant edge there. Or um, I talked before about if you're analyzing companies that often it's missed, there's something that's missed that's like, it's not necessarily in the investment sheet, but actually you know that they've got uh, exposure to this, or you know that that's that. And so you can sometimes make more judgments when the big players aren't involved in it. So that's something to, to look at. On the no side of the argument of like, okay, well, um, you know, shouldn't I shouldn't really trade, I should stick to the big guns. There is opportunity in there. Liquidity is there. It's cheaper to trade generally. The spreads are tight. So if you're an active trader, then it's trading stuff that is very liquid. It's very cheap to trade, like your USD, like your crude oil, like this, like that is going to be beneficial to you. You know, you're going to be able to trade it. And you're going to have to accept the fact that you're trading purely based on some kind of edge that isn't anything like the edge you'll have in the exotic thing or the unusual. So you're going to not know any more information than anybody has. You're not gonna be able to kind of make better analysis than some of the big guys have got. You're gonna to have to trade on stuff like price action, which under the right conditions, it's super profitable. It's a super good strategy. You've got your certain setups you're using. You're looking at the price action, you're looking at the way it's trading, look at the tape, look at this, look at that, all these other things, and you're making a judgment. And under certain conditions, when people are moving big money, then that's your edge as a little trader. And I'll talk about that 
you know a lot uh, in the price action uh, uh, videos but if you look at where the money is flowing and you say well the big money's flowing and they're kind of not looking at what they're doing short term that becomes an edge for us if they don't care what they're doing over the next five minutes if they're paying up and we spot somebody who's prepared to pay up we can ride that coattails from a day trading perspective take 50 cents out of the market stick it in our pocket with reasonable size and look for the next opportunity and that trade opportunity wouldn't exist necessarily in the in the kind of exotic ones or the more unusual ones because there isn't the volume there so whilst the big ones do offer the opportunity for me it's a case of going where the opportunity is at the time now i know this is kind of well, it's not really answering the question but it is because bear with me when you have opportunity in the big markets i.e crude oils coming off multi multi-year highs very very aggressively that's a significant opportunity for you if you are trading price action you can read price action because you know there's a lot of dumping going on you know on the short side there's opportunity it's a case of timing the trade if you can time it there's going to be money to make there if a currency is suddenly rocketing to the moon based on some geopolitical thing you know there's opportunity there most of the time these things if they're chugging around you haven't got the opportunity so you start to have a list of smaller more obscure markets that maybe come into play so you say okay well i'm watching this company because they are this this and this i'm watching this stock because of this i'm watching this commodity because of this so for example for me i would be looking okay i know that every so often coffee bizarre futures contracts not that bizarre but you know, not very commonly traded if you just contract for retail. Not many people on YouTube are talking about trading coffee. I know that it goes through cycles of where there is concern, significant concern about the harvest, about the production, about the yield. And so that offers opportunity. Now, coffee may be not the best example because it's not that obscure, but it's obscure enough that it's away from the real big guns. I know there's a lot of real intelligent people and money involved in coffee, but it's kind of for example purposes here, is that then there's opportunity to trade that based on you know a, a news flow thing you're you're kind of in a level playing field if you like and you can use some of those price action type skills that you've got from the bigger markets in with these smaller markets maybe the same thing for a specific oil company you're watching maybe you're waiting to see what happens with the exploration report of a field they've got and you know that if that comes in that's going to be super bullish but you know that it's going to be bullish for the whole day generally so you can perhaps jump on that because there's going to be people late to the party investors late or whatever it is you've got some kind of thesis around it so the point is guys is to have a little bit of both have a basket or do some research in the downtime of stuff that you'll go to and you'll keep an eye on for when it presents opportunity and have your kind of go to a bigger market for your regular trading but the point is as traders is whichever one you're doing is to get involved when you perceive you have an edge you're not looking to get involved in something when it's just sitting there doing nothing because you're going to bleed spread you're going to be bleed commissions you're going to get frustrated you're going to get involved when one of those is moving or one of those is setting up to your specific setups you're going to get involved in the more exotic stuff or the more unusual stuff again when it's matching your setups that's the advantage we've got as little players we can get involved when we want to so Going back to that question, should you specialize in obscure markets for more opportunity? Do both. Have some specialisms, have some understanding and deep knowledge of obscure markets, but also trade the bigger stuff as well. Trade the things that offer opportunity. And I think that's a good sweet spot. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.